Hey there, thanks for watching. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing five financial lessons that I learned the hard way. So personal finance is an ongoing learning process and I try to always be learning and growing from my mistakes, my failures, as well as my successes. That said, here are five lessons that I had to learn the hard way and in some cases more than once. I would be much better if I had learned these lessons sooner. So with that, I'm gonna share with you five financial lessons that I learned the hard way. If you would please give this video a thumbs up. It's a huge help to me and my channel. I really appreciate it. Lesson number one, personal finance is 80% behavior and only 20% head knowledge. If I had learned this and really internalized this sooner, I feel like I would have been in a much better financial place today because that's a very empowering statement. That means that just by my actions, I can affect 80% of my financial future. And head knowledge, that 20%, you can learn that. I can learn that. So to kind of give more context to this lesson, I was an English major by trade. I mention this continually because by nature, I'm not naturally good with numbers. I've trained myself to check and then double check my own math because I've got like a little bit of dyslexia thrown in there and I'm not really necessarily the quickest when it comes to doing sums. But I say that to say that I never thought that I was going to be naturally good with money. And I thought that was just how it was. I had a very fixed mindset around my financial ability. And I wish I'd learned this lesson sooner that 80% of personal finance is behavior. And that by simply making good financial choices, I could change 80% of my financial destiny. Once more, that's a very empowering thought, especially for someone that never thought that they were naturally good with money. So it's both empowering and encouraging of a very growth oriented mindset, which is something that I've tried to adapt continually throughout my life. I am almost never the smartest person in the room, but gosh darn it, I will be the most persistent and I'm often the most scrappy. <laughs> All of that to say the knowledge that I have, I've had to work really hard for. So this is something that I'd say to anyone, especially younger people who ask for financial advice, 80% behavior, only 20% head knowledge. So if you can control that 80%, and if you make the decision to do well with that 80%, that 20% takes care of itself. So that's the first lesson that I've learned the hard way. Financial lesson number two that I learned the hard way, plan your spending or your spending will destroy you. This is something I learned the hard way, both when I was in college and then the first couple of years I was out of college. This was kind of what I'm referring to as the dark ages of spending and planning because there was no planning. I had no concept of a budget or sticking to a budget. For me, a budget was kind of this like amorphous kind of like big <laughs> nebulous concept that didn't really impact my day-to-day -day decisions. And this one example sticks out. I had a friend in college and we all went to Target on a Target run and he had like a beanie and a bar of soap and some toothpaste. And he had like these three things and he's like, okay, I only have $10. I can only get two of these things or which one do I put back? And that just like didn't occur to me to like put one back. If you couldn't afford it, you had to put one back. It was so freeing and encouraging to me because at the time I had my very first credit card and I had a little taste of independence and I had a car and I had a job and I felt like I was on top of the world and I could afford everything. But deep down inside me, I knew that there was kind of a disconnect going on and I knew that I was living beyond my means and I wasn't doing as well as I could be doing with my money. So that was a huge lesson in planning my spending and not only making the plan, but also sticking to it. So not letting my spending destroy me. That's lesson number two. Lesson number three is you can be happy with less. This is a big one because I think that in the day to day for me, it's really easy to get caught up in this kind of velocity of wanting more and not being satisfied and content with what I have. This is kind of what drove my interest in minimalism and paring down. I feel like I started on the minimalism trend before I knew what it was called. One holiday weekend, I just woke up early for no reason on a Saturday morning and decided that I was gonna get rid of 75% of my possessions. I pushed all my stuff into the middle of my room. I decided I was gonna paint the room and start all over again. That was, almost nine years ago. And I'd say from that point forward, I reached a, a sort of possession set point of about 50% less 
than where I was. And all that happened in a weekend. I decided that I didn't want to have all this stuff and I didn't want to have all these attachments. So through that event, I certainly learned that I can be happy with a lot less. But it's like weeding a garden. I feel like those weeds grow both emotionally and spiritually and mentally. And I find that it takes a lot of persistence to prune that garden and make sure that I'm pulling up the weeds of want and discontent and consumerism and really being happy with the things that I have. So that's lesson number three that I learned the hard way is that I can be happy with less. Lesson number four, make a plan to increase your income both by increasing the value of your skills and by having side projects going on. So that's really building out multiple streams of income. This was a lesson I learned around about that nine years ago area. And all these things kind of work together. I was working on increasing my income while cutting back on my possessions. And I feel like that was a really powerful concept. So I started implementing that maybe 10 years ago. But if I had learned that 20 years ago, my life would be completely different today. I don't feel like I really took earning income seriously right when I got out of college. I feel like I viewed income as a very set thing, not as something that you could increase and a living, breathing thing that you can feed and grow in a positive way. By growing myself, I can grow my income and vice versa, the two work together. I am learning to welcome an expanded income and not be afraid of the things that might go along with that expanded income. This is an ongoing process, but I wish I'd started the journey to that expanded income sooner. That said, I'm glad I started it when I did and I'm working on it. I'm working on expanding that income even further. Financial lesson number five that I learned the hard way. The only limits on you are the limits you place on yourself. This one is a little bit challenging because I realize that as I sit here in the United States, I come from a very privileged position just by being born in this country. So yes, we are each of us born with certain advantages. I feel like personally, I accepted a lot of limits on myself that I'd just grown up with in my own head and that I never thought to challenge. I never thought I'd have a big income and so I never thought to expand my income. I fully believe that we are each born with the seeds of greatness within us and it's up to us to nurture those seeds and that potential to be the absolute best that it can be. That sounds very nebulous and vague, but for me, what that means is taking myself and my work and my decisions seriously and really looking to develop my full potential. So being very disciplined and intentional with myself every single day. It's not easy, it's really not easy, but it is possible. It's something that I aim to be better at every single day. So there you go. Those are five financial lessons I had to learn the hard way. Hope these have been interesting for you. I would love to hear what financial lessons you had to learn the hard way. Leave me a comment down below. I'd love to read them. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll keep watching. Bye.